Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of Govinsky's Tutorials. Today, I think, is my first video on a free app. And it's my prediction that this is going to be one of, if not the best, free app of 2021. And in fact, it's probably going to be one of the best apps of 2021. I'll be very surprised if this does not uh, get featured in my end of year video, because it's absolutely brilliant and I've been using it a lot. If you follow me on Instagram or Twitter, um, you'll see that I post a lot of little examples of musical things that I'm working on. And you'll have seen that tons of stuff that I'm posting recently uh, features this. It's absolutely brilliant. And although it's free, it is by no means some kind of throwaway plugin. Like there's heavy, heavy, heavy duty research behind this plugin because Jatin, the developer, Jatin Chowdhury, maybe I'm not Jatin, if I'm mispronouncing your name, sorry. Uh, actually is a PhD student or was a PhD student, can't remember the details, and this was part of a research research project. And that's one of the reasons that he decided to make it free. But there is tons of heavy-duty academic research behind this plugin. And it's basically a physical, physically modeled emulation of a reel-to-reel -reel tape machine. So originally based on the Sony TC260 reel-to-reel, but you can use this to emulate lots of different reel-to-reel -reel tape machines. Now, the app does have a little tip jar. Let me just turn on my mouse here. It's turned itself off. Uh, if we look down at the bottom right here, there's a tip jar. And I would encourage you, if you appreciate the app, why not give him a tip? But he has uh, said, you know, he didn't want to charge for this plugin. Because I think a lot of people have been surprised. Wow, you know, this is so amazing. Why are you not charging for this? I certainly was surprised that it was free. And um, I think he feels basically that, you know, I don't know, maybe he got funding and stuff for his research or maybe not. I have no idea. But he felt that, was, that because it was part of a research project, it was in the spirit of things that it should remain free. And not only that, it's also open source. So if you think that you could use this to develop something else, then uh, go and yeah, check out the details on that. Um, so the video today will be a walkthrough of this. At the end of the video, I'll put some of the examples of things that I've been using this on recently. Uh, let's just start with a little example. So here, if you hear, I got a nice piano sound being played by Ravenscroft. And this is coming from, uh, it's disappeared here, uh, piano motifs. So Piano Motifs, which I've also done a video on and is a great generative app, is uh, providing the MIDI for this. I'm putting it through FabFilter Pro R Reverb. But the star of the show here is definitely Chow Tape Model. So let me just take that off and let you hear what it's like. So here we have a lovely pristine piano. Now, I'm letting you hear a really, really messed up version of this. This is something similar to, um, maybe especially this one. If any of you are fans of William Basinski, and if you've listened to his track Disintegration, Disintegration Tapes, I think it's called, or Disintegration Loop, can't remember, um, you'll be familiar with this kind of extremely degraded sound that you get from really old tape, really old tape that is disintegrating. But you don't have to go that extreme. Let's just quickly go through a few of the presets. Just to give you some idea of some of the different flavors that are available. And if you don't know what underbiased is, soon you will when I walk you through the app. I just want to go through the presets quickly. Because this is a free app, you can check out these presets yourself. My main aim is to walk you through this without you needing to read the manual. I've done that work for you, and if you appreciate that, everyone, do please give this a thumbs up. Okay, so we're back on the default, and I'll start with this. 
and we'll start our walkthrough. So if we take a quick look at the interface first, we've also got the built-in preset menu here. And then we have here our input section basically, where we can control input gain and a few other things, are also our output gain and these filters as well. And we'll talk in more detail about this later, including what this makeup is for. It's quite a useful thing, actually. And then here we come into the main, this is called the hysteresis section, where we have these controls that shape a lot of the things that are responsible for the real analog warmth sound that a lot of us associate with tape, as well as a bit of a distorted sound that you can get when you push things. So we have a tone section here, basically like an EQ. And over here, <clears throat> this um, is related to the behavior of tape heads. So if we look at uh, what a reel-to-reel -reel tape player looks like, you've got your reels, you've got your tape, and then the tape passes these heads, right, which can do different things. One can erase stuff, one can record stuff, and we've got our playback head. So here we have some things related to how the playhead will behave. And degrade, this section can make it sound like old tape that's degrading. And here this can sound like tape that's being chewed by a broken tape machine. <clears throat> and here we have our wow and flutter which is what a lot of us are looking for when we use these tape emulations to mess up our sounds. A lot of the lo-fi sound that we're looking for comes from adding a little bit of these. These are great. For example, these are a very big part of a lot of the Boards of Canada sound. We also have some things at the bottom here, oversampling, hysteresis mode. Uh, we'll, we'll go through a little bit about what this is. I won't go into it in too much detail, but it's all there in the manual if you want to check it out. This mix group is a really cool function that I'll talk about, and I suspect maybe some people watching this do not know how to use this or how useful it is. And then here again we have our tip jar. Alright, so let's uh, look first of all at the gain section. So we can control input gain, dry, wet, and output gain. So. Whether we're, let me go to a more extreme preset here. Um, we're going to get quite a different sound depending on how our input gain and output gain are set. For example, compare this with a low input gain and a high output gain. So you can see this one is much more processed, much more extreme. Let's go back to default for a minute. So in this tape section, we have three things, bias, saturation, and drive. So bias was something that tape machines have to basically increase the fidelity of their sound. So with a higher bias level, we'll have basically a more faithful sound. And with very low bias levels, we'll have something really, really, really low quality, which may be what you're, what you're going for. Obviously, right at the bottom, it's very, very extreme. So the saturation, the, the drive will amplify the hysteresis effect which is basically the magnetization process that is responsible for a lot of the character of tape. The saturation will add more distortion. If we take the drive all the way down, it'll cut the sound out. The drive is different from input gain because input gain will not really affect the character of the sound. 
in the same way the drive will. So in the tone section, we here set the frequency that is the line between the bass and the treble frequencies areas. I just realized I forgot to go over the filter section, so I'll look at that in a second. So the frequency is going to be quite important for the behavior of these knobs. Let's go back and look at this filter section. So we have a low cut filter. So that can be really nice to play with, right? And a high cut filter. And now if we put this makeup on, what it will do is it will put through the frequencies that have been cut out. It will pass them through without actually processing them. So this is giving you some control over the frequencies that will get saturated. But I'd want to mention here, just briefly, the Real Bus plugin by Tone Boosters. Um, that is also a fantastic tape emulation. And that gives you much, much more control over exactly what gets saturated, what gets saturated. So if you want a degree of much higher control over things, you may want to check out Realbus. I did a video on that, and it's a brilliant app. I also did a video on Kylum Audio Tape Pro, so I'll try and put links to both of those above if I have enough links. In this video, we're limited to five links per YouTube video. If I don't, just go and search in my archives. So uh, both very good effects that can do things that this can't like. For example, Real Boss has a great delay section. It's got great flanger section and so on and so on. But all these apps have their own pros and cons. Obviously a huge pro of this one is that it's free. But if you like tape sounds and you like lo-fi stuff, I would encourage you to check out my videos on those other two apps and, and maybe get them. Now, actually, I have not tried to automate this, but I'm just thinking, let's see if this is all set up. Yes. Nice, right. So this would be something that could be really nice to automate, right? Lovely lo-fi filter waves. Okay, so gain filters, tape and tone is done. Now here we come into this loss, degrade and chew section. So first of all, we turn these on and off here. And these are independent of each other. So this is something weird, by the way, because here in the wow and flutter section, if I turn this off, this one also gets turned off. So in this section, these are not independent of each other, and I wonder if that's a bug. Because I think in some apps, WoW and Flutter can be done separately. I mean, they can be done separately here as well by just turning the depth off, so I don't know, maybe this is intentional design. Anyway, just to mention that the behavior of this section is a little bit different from this section. Now I'm gonna stop this piano for a second. So again, let's, uh, let's look at, at our picture that we were just looking at here. So we're going to be looking at some things related to the playback head and the way the playback head interacts with the tape and some things about the quality of the tape. Um, so here we have the gap in the playhead. So playheads have a gap in them and for a high fidelity sound, a narrow gap is important. But if you look, I was researching this earlier. If you see um, a tape machine that's kind of gone bad, 
you can see here, this was from, a, what's this website called? Analog something or other. All the black lines in the tape path area, the shiny center section, are head gaps opening up. Uh, so, you know, this is, it shouldn't look like this. We shouldn't see these thick black lines. And you can see these are different thicknesses and these ones haven't really opened up. So you might want to uh, emulate a, a wider gap for a, a sound of a broken tape machine. Um, we'll, we'll listen to these in a second, by the way. I'll just explain them with the music off. So here we have the thickness of the tape. And here we have the spacing between the, the, the space between the tape and the tape head. And we're talking extremely small distances here, microns. Azimuth. This is something about the angle of the tape head against the tape or something like that. And this can create a kind of stereo widening effect. And here we have our tape speed. And this means inches per second. Um, so low values here means a slower speed. We have fewer inches of tape passing the tape head per second. And higher tape speeds will have higher fidelity lower tape speeds, lower fidelity, which again might be just what the doctor ordered. So let's have a listen to what this section can make things sound like. Now, how these behave will depend very much, you know, how these affect the frequency response will depend on the tape speed a lot. So I'll actually start with a, a low tape speed because things will be a lot more noticeable. Do you hear how much more noticeable that is? So you can see that these all reduce the quality of the sound but in different ways. They affect the frequency response in different ways. And this one affects the sort of stereo. This can be quite subtle. So we're basically losing a lot of different frequencies here, right? Again, it may be exactly what you're looking for. And again, see how the frequency response changes as we increase the tape speed. Oh, I like that. You see how we're hearing the change in the tape speed there? Nice. Okay, so I'll turn that off and we'll go on to degrade. So we need to put up some depth here. Now here we can, so this is going to multiply it by 0 0.1. In other words, it's going to divide it. <laughs> um, so this will allow this to move in much smaller increments. So if you want a subtle effect, you turn this on. If you turn this off, it will be much more drastic. So here we're bringing some randomness into the effect. It gives a rhythmic quality. And here we're putting an envelope on that. So 
So it's basically taken out the attack here. Now this true one is pretty radical. So this is like your tape machine has chewed your tape. And so this will affect how often we hear this chewing effect. So that can be pretty cool for some rhythmic effects. It's almost like a tremolo effect here, in fact. And again, we can bring a bit of randomness into that. So if you want, if you want something rhythmic, and you want it to add a kind of percussive element, you would probably want the variance off. Depends what you're looking for, of course. Now, as I say, wow and flutter is a lot of what a lot of us are looking for when we come to an app like this. So, in tape machines, you often have some mechanical defects that will mean that the tape slows down and speeds up. And flutter is a much faster effect than wow. I mean, this can really, wow, radically alter your sound. It's not doing anything right with... But we're not hearing anything anyway, when the rate's right down. Okay, so that's what flutter sounds like. And then, wow. I love WOW. I personally generally use it at a very slow rate. But for some sound effects and things you might want to use it with a fast rate. I just love this kind of thing. Now, down here, we have oversampling. So, this will give us higher quality, but may push your DSP over the limit. So the manual recommends use the largest amount of oversampling that you can get away with. But we're getting away with that here. I mean, we've got a very simple session going on here. So let's leave it at that. And then here, this hysteresis mode, this gets a bit technical. But basically, the manual mentions that this is probably the highest quality setting. But again, that may tax your DSP. If you can see, my DSP has gone dangerously high. So let me bring the oversampling down. Right. So you're going to want to be careful with these. So this one, maybe choose this if... If, if, if your system can handle it. Um, these NR ones are supposed to be superior to these RK ones, and in general, higher number will be superior to a lower number. 
Uh, this was another one which the manual said is maybe a bit like this, but it might distort a little bit more. Might have some harshness. Again, you can check the details in the manual. And this just refers to um, an older version of the app, the way the hysteresis mode was set up in that. So I guess in the older version it didn't have all these different choices. So let's have a little listen to these. See if you can hear any difference. Again, how noticeable these things are will maybe depend a lot on what other things are going on. You can hear some differences here for sure. Now this is cool. Mixed group. So, let me turn this off a second. So, this is a little bit like, um, let's see, in AUM, okay, we'll open up another channel here. So, if you're a, a, an AUM user, you should know that we have this thing here, multibus audio unit instances, where we can use to open multiple instances of apps that are linked to each other. Link to apps, a link to instances of the app that are running in different channels, like here, for example, right? Like here, this compressor here is linked to this one. So this is basically in in Chow tape. It's basically got its own inbuilt version of this multibus thing. So if we look in here, we will not find that coming up in the multibus section. But what we do is this, right? Let's say let's say I open up another instrument here. I'm not going to do this, I'm just going to explain it. So imagine I open up another instrument here, and imagine then I want to open up a Chow tape. And imagine I want this one to be linked to this one. So if we remember, oh, I didn't set it here yet, okay. So let's here choose, let's say, number one. doesn't really matter what number we choose, but let's just choose number one. So choose number one here, and then here also choose number one. Uh, you can see this little thing has appeared here, which I guess shows that they're linked. So let's look at both of these on the screen at the same time. So now, hopefully, uh, when I move this, yes, you see, it's moving in the other app. So any changes I make to one will also happen in the other. And so the point of there being a few different numbers here is that I could have these ones, for example, I could call I could call this group one. And so any change I make to a knob in this will affect the same knob in this one and vice versa, right? So these are linked together. But let's say I open up some other channels. And let's say I want to put chow tape on those as well. But let's say I want these instances to be linked to each other, and I don't want them to be linked to these, then I would just assign these to a different number mix group. See, we're getting a bit of DSP spike there. So I could give this number two, for example. And this one I could also make number two. You see, this has a different color now. But anyway, let me close those because this is a heavy duty plugin, especially as, as you remember, I put up the oversampling and the high quality hysteresis mode. So, uh, yeah, that, I mean, if you want to, if your system can't handle it, you just, again, you can consult the manual or just basically maybe go for some of the, like try this STN, for example. And really, the most important one, I think, is the oversampling. So if it can handle it, just choose a lower oversampling amount. Okay, so uh, now I'll just say goodbye, but what I'll do is I'll let you hear some of the examples that I've, uh, as I mentioned at the start of the video, some things that I posted on Instagram and Twitter and so on. If you'd like to follow me on Instagram and or Twitter, if you look at the pinned comment, um, at the top of the YouTube comment section, you'll find my Instagram and Twitter account details there. Or just go to Instagram or Twitter 
and just search Gavinsky's tutorials and you'll find me. I generally only tweet or post stuff on Instagram that's related to music, very rarely other stuff. Almost everything is iOS music related. Uh, a lot of little videos with clips of things that I've been doing, showing different apps working together and stuff. Sometimes when I get a new app, but I haven't made a video on it yet, I put some little uh, teasers and stuff out there. So anyway, maybe see you on Instagram or Twitter, folks. Uh, again, if you haven't done it yet, please do give this a thumbs up if you liked it. And subscribe, of course, if you haven't already. Uh, and I'll see you in the next video. And just once again, just thanks a lot to Jatin for making this plugin. It's just an absolute joy. Um, absolutely brilliant. Love it and can't believe that it's free. I'm going to be using this a lot. It's just fantastic. So thanks, Jatin. And thanks, everyone, for watching. See you soon. Carried out.